Hi, my name is Anna Sorrell. I'm the owner and founder of Body Rock Dance Competition. And I'm also pursuing my master's at Bethel Seminary in Marriage and Family Therapy. I've been dancing ever since I was a little kid. Um, I danced to make friends in uh, like high school, like junior high, that's, that's basically it. I, I'm, I'm Filipino, uh, so I'm shy. Um, my parents taught me to get good grades and go to school and finish school, be a doctor, but I couldn't help it. I mean, I just really love dancing. Um, and that's how I got through most of my teenage life. Um, but again, I was still shy, so I had crews and stuff, but I wasn't, you know, I'm not the typical like battler, you know, person going in the circle. I just really just like making friends, you know. So then afterwards, I was uh, I was going to be a teacher. That's what I was doing. I was in uh, college to become a liberal arts major, and I was walking by this class, and um, this white lady was teaching um, hip hop, and I thought, hell no, you can't teach hip hop in a class. What are you doing? And this is never done before. Like you could get credit, you could get a PE credit for hip hop dance. So I decided to hang out and just watch. And I was so like impressed because this lady was doing it. She was counting. I'd never heard that before either. You know, when I was watching videos and stuff, we, we called out names, you know, Slick Rick, you know, Roger Rabbit, Running Man. I would never heard of five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> but this lady was teaching choreography and um, getting down and I thought, wow, I need to take that class. I know what hip hop is. Dude, this is an easy A for me. <laughs> so her name was Angie Bunch and she later became my mentor. And um, she owned Culture Shock Dance Troupe, which was the only hip hop dance team ever. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, so she noticed me and uh, she had another class, which was uh, the choreography class and she encouraged me to you know enroll in choreography class and then i learned how to be a choreographer all of a sudden i learned what five six seven eight putting different kind of moves into a specific eight eight count frame and putting it on stage um, i learned blocking i learned staging uh, all through this dance program at uh, mesa college and it was funny because at the time i was I was pretty pissed that I couldn't go to a university. My parents were like, oh, you know, get good grades, get good grades. And I was comparing myself a lot, like, fuck, how come I didn't go to UCSD or UC Berkeley or UC whatever? I, looking back, I thank God that I didn't because that shaped a lot of my life. I met a, a lot of my really good friends there at Mesa. One of them was this dude named Christopher Braswell. <laughs> and I have to mention Chris because he links into um, Body Rock or a Busted Groove at the time. Next thing you know, they were having uh, auditions for Culture Shock and he was like, you wanna try out? It's like, yeah, dude, let's try out. I, I never, I don't know what Culture Shock is, but whatever, you know, it must be something cool because Angie is a part of it. And so we tried out in 1996 and um, we made it. It took me three tries though, three tries. But yeah, Culture Shock was the beginning of everything because it really, gave me a place to cultivate like all of my dance skills and it gave me a network uh, because I knew dancers from everywhere. All the dancers that you look up to now, they were nobody before and I knew them through just dancing because I was on Culture Shock. You know, I met them in every city, um, traveling, performing. So anyways, um, how I remember it is that it was a culmination of things. Number one, we were losing our studio. Number two, Chris had contracted cancer. And number three, I think it was just the momentum of how popular hip hop dance was becoming and crews were starting to get noticed more. There was already a fusion, there was already a vibe. My friends that were on the team were like, Anna, dude, we should do it. You, you should start a, a competition. And I'd be like, are you sure? Uh, I don't know anything about that. And they were like, no, come on, dude. It, it makes perfect sense. 
you know, it'll help raise money for the center so that we can stay open. And um, Culture Shock has such a big name. Chris has passed away in 1999 and um, that gave me the push. Remember I was telling you I was shy. When he passed away in 1999, I promised myself that I would get to do all the things that he never got to do. So I became director, uh, artistic director of Culture Shock. Um, I was also part of DDO agency. I was auditioning in LA. I was asked to do like a choreographer's carnival. So I really thought I was gonna be like this Missy Elliott choreographer. That was my goal. I wanted to choreograph for Missy Elliott. I was going to these auditions in my overalls and my big baggy shirts and there would be like these video girls in nothing but bikinis and I'm auditioning. Look at me, okay, I'm auditioning. And I remember thinking, man, I do not fit in here, you know. I, I, I'm doing all this and you know, they're doing this and I, I, don't, I don't fit in here at all. But um, when they gave me the opportunity to choreograph, of course, you know, with Chris passing, I, I had a piece that I dedicated to him. Um, and because I, I'm Filipino, I, um, I took that, the original, the, the dance that we have with the cups, the pandango sa ilaw, and um, I mixed it and I just choreographed a piece for him. But that was the piece I submitted for this. The choreographer, carnival producer was, it was just like, like a movie, you know? They were like, are you sure you wanna do that? This is your one shot. Don't you know that producers are gonna be here? This is, this is it, this is your chance. Do you, are you serious about having a career in dance or what? I know your friend passed away, but this is your one shot. And I remember I was like, well, should, maybe I should just, yeah, I should just re-choreograph everything. You know, I should just throw it away, you know. I, I, how bad do I want? I, yeah, hell yeah, I really want this really bad. But then part of me was like, no, no, man, I, I'm grieving. You know, I was like, I, this is my art. This is my dance. I don't always want to tell, have someone tell me what I should do. So I remember just thinking or saying, well, God, if you want me to be famous, one day I'm just going to be famous. I don't have to worry about it. But right now my heart is in a place where I just want to dance and present this for my friend. And so that night I did the dance and of course, yeah, they were passing my cards out. And like, I remember Janet Jackson's uh, tour choreographer and Usher and all them were there and they were like, yeah, thanks. That's not what we're looking for. Thanks, no thanks. You know, and my heart was like, ah, oh, I messed up, you know? But then afterwards I went home, I just was like, Tch. It's fine. And then after that, I created Bust a Group. <laughs> after that, it was like, I'm gonna put all my energy into creating this show so that we'll have a studio and that we'll have a place where we just throw a jam. Like everyone can get together and remember what it's like. Like when we dance, I mean, back then, it's hard to explain. It's like, you know, people think of community now and I wonder if they really understand what that means. So when we threw Bust a Groove, like that first year, it was amazing. I mean, I, I never thought um, after that night, all I remember was that it felt good to, to have all our friends session um, and just be there. And it felt like Chris was still there. And that's why I think I remember I continued to do those events because it reminded me of when he was still there. So that's something that I appreciated in, in having that network or that, that place, you know, where all these different people came from everywhere and we just gathered once, once a year, you know, just to perform, but also to learn from each other. And so I remember sitting there and the other girls that threw this with me, I didn't do it alone. I mean, they worked front desk at Culture Shock and the other one was my, one of my girlfriends that her boyfriend was a DJ. And that's the only reason why I asked her. I was like, oh, we probably need music. Maybe you should help me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I remember we were sitting there, we're like, yeah, we need to do this every year. This is tight. Let's do this every year. And so, yeah, that's how Busted Groove happened in the year 2000. Well, a lot of things are different. Um, I don't, for me, honestly, the, I think it just got bigger. And that's, that's what it is for me. It doesn't feel so small. Um, before, like I said, where I, I literally, uh, trusted everyone and knew everybody and you know could walk up to anybody and and it was cool like now it's like literally uh, I could go to my, my own show even Body Rock and not know anyone <laughs> it's way way different um, and also there's uh, for Body Rock I mean international countries are now competing at it 
So we have teams from Korea, teams from Japan, teams from New Zealand, teams from Australia, um, teams from London. It's, it's crazy. That's what I really, it's global. I, I feel that, that change too. I think the whole culture, I think it just was easier to spread, you know? Like when I was in Singapore, I, I literally thought, this is kind of weird. So there's all these people that are not American, but they're breakdancing and they're battling and they're learning Mari Kioni choreo. A lot of them barely speak English, but they're just as passionate about doing it. Like even though I felt removed because I, I didn't know anyone out there, I could see that it looks the same. Like it's kind of like, I can't believe that a whole culture was able to have passed on, you know, to a whole other side of the country. How did they learn that? Social media, <laughs> you know, like really. Oh, and as far as the dancing goes, I think it's always been like this though, that if you're a new dancer, you don't appreciate the old school. You don't appreciate the founders. It takes a while for people that just get started to take an interest in foundation or to take an interest in basics, you know? Or even where hip hop started or even ask those questions, why should they care? All they really care about is the most popular thing on YouTube. And if you're just getting into the dance, that makes sense for me. I mean, that's what you're exposed to. So you wanna be like Mari and Keone or you wanna be doing, you know, finger tuts, <laughs> you know? Uh, however it is that, that that's brought you into it, that's what, that's what the kids are about right now. And I mean, that's whatever's popular or that's, that's whatever's getting saturated, circulated through YouTube. It is sad, you know, I, I remember someone was telling me at World of Dance, they saw Mr. Wiggle sitting at a table and then they saw Chachi sitting at a table. Well, there was a line out the door to get an autograph from Chachi and no one really knew who Mr. Wiggles was. I was like, oh. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's, that's unfortunate. Leadership wise too, I think that's gonna be important in passing on the values of how we started and the values of the old, the people that came before us into the new. And if we don't do that, then it's kind of, kind of, I don't want to say hurt, but it will definitely influence the newer generation in a different way. We're trying to be more, we call that active in, in trying to like hold meetings and maybe promote workshops so that those, the old school founders that, that did dance hip hop could still be connected to the new generation. But it's so weird because we're, we're totally doing two different things, if you think about it. So you have over here, Mr. Wiggles and Don Campbell Lock, Rocksteady Crew, East Coast, West Coast, like old school hip hop. And over here, you have Mari Keone, Bing, Shauna Baristo. <laughs> it was nothing like what is over here, you know? And I remember uh, when I was hanging out with them, Bing was telling me that they get kind of scared you know, when they're on these workshop tours and they're touring all across the country. But one of the old school founders was really nice. I think his name was Benny Ninja or Arthur Ninja had asked him, hey, where do you guys come from? I see so many Asian kids um, at these workshops all over the country now. Where did your scene come from? So he wanted to know about us. Um, and basically being told him, you know, about the choreography world out here in Cali. And they were like, oh, that makes sense. And um, somebody else that they had asked, a Buddha Stretch, I guess, either Buddha Stretch or Link, one of the, the guys from Mop Tops, had mentioned to Mari that, you know, maybe we don't really consider you guys hip hop, like the moves or how you hear the music, but somehow they do um, acknowledge that we are linked to what they did. Because I think, if you get down to it, we're not technically trained and we're not, we're not doing ballet, we're not doing jazz. Um, a lot of us have no training except for each other, you know? And everyone um, kind of moves their own way, but there's still incorporation of, you know, waving. Some floor work can be a little bit house or some floor work can be even a little bit um, b-boyish, but not exactly. So there are some elements that are connected over here, but it just, it's just interpreted in a different way because of the eight counts and because of the music too. Nobody, honestly, I don't even listen to hip hop music anymore. 
Um, right now, it's like Nicki Minaj. I'm not into Nicki Minaj. I'm not into, you know, whatever's on the radio. I, I just don't listen to it anymore. So now you've had these choreographers choreographing to Sam Smith, you know, or choreographing to some contemporary song because that's what they're feeling. I think what I find probably underlying it all is that it is a voice for young people and it captures uh, street, I don't even want to say street, maybe middle class um, kids. That's probably what the same underlying theme I see in both eras or both worlds. It's still cool, it's still fresh, and that's why kids are drawn to it. Yeah, and it is, it's a voice for how we're living now and what's important to us. But yeah, they don't look, it doesn't look like what started over here. There's a lot of things to this question too. I, I think the one advantage of how it evolved is that now street dance is elevated to a place of respect. Back then, when I would tell somebody that, oh yeah, I dance hip hop, they would look at me like, oh, whatever. Because you're not a ballet dancer, you know? You're not doing real dancing, you're not doing tandus. <laughs> you know, what is that hip hop, whatever. But now if you tell someone that you are a hip hop dancer, no matter if you know you just started or you've been doing it for years, people are like, oh wow, you're a hip hop dancer? Oh, that's so cool. You know, they understand what it is now and it is a big deal. Another thing too is there is more mixing. When I first, oh yeah. I will take credit for this. <laughs> My team, thank God, uh, was the first choreo team to have real b-boys ever um, on our team. So they taught us about b-boy culture, hip-hop culture, they would take us to jams, um, they would show us videos, Freshest Kids, you know, about graffiti, about DJing, about the four elements. Thank you, Rainin and Eddie G, China, Saki, thank you. Depends on where you go. But I know here in San Diego, there is more respect from b-boys to be like, oh yeah, we know what choreo events are and they come, you know, they'll come to our choreo events. And some people that are in uh, choreo will understand, dude, you know, b-boys, I mean, that's hard. Like, they'll know. They'll know what breakdancing is and they'll know the difference and they'll go and they'll support and they'll go to battles. Some people are actually even wanting to train and wanting to learn how to freestyle. So there's that crossover that I like. It doesn't happen all the time. There are still some that are like, man, you're not choreo, you're not a real dancer. But that's kind of like old. <laughs> you know? There is more of a, a crossover now in both. Yeah, a blending. Appreciation for both. What I love about the, the styles, you know, popping, locking, and house is they give you fundamentals. Yeah. They give you basic steps. But it is your your choice, you know, how you want to interpret, how you want to put together steps. And so you want to learn, you want to learn how to do the dances. You can do it your way. And then, you know, it's your expression. Uh, it gives you more freedom, right? So I feel more like, oh, dude, that's tight. Oh, now I can do it my own way. But what I appreciate about choreo is that choreo, it's uh, for someone that is not used to being creative yet, it's like baby steps, like paint by the numbers is what I've heard it referred to as before. So you have lines and then you teach someone lines and then they do this forever, you know, and then five, six, seven, eight, then they understand how to do that step until they're comfortable doing their own steps. But yeah, house, I love all of those styles still. I mean, they, they have their own way. It's kind of like languages, their own way of talking yeah. and moving forward. But with choreo, what it is is whoever wins, <laughs> whoever uh, this style over here that gets first place or gets noticed, then I notice is that everyone wants to take class from this person or everyone wants to use the same song and then that's why it's things start kind of like looking the same you know but not but also i don't want to say that everybody does that because that's not true most people will do that most people will go oh wow i like that let me do that same thing but there are some people that go oh yeah i like that but i want to learn some other stuff uh, i definitely think it serves as a platform specifically for 
the people that express their art or their dance in terms of teams and choreography. So all over the world, people are inspired by the Keone Madrids, the Sean Evaristos, the Pat Cruises, you know. I mean, I can count names and names and names. And even in those, those years, the freestyle community has also been um, part of Body Rock. Uh, Siege and uh, Dennis, they won as DS players. Uh, Junior Boogaloo, Judge, maybe two, two three years ago. Uh, Farside, he's now part of AOV and directs AOV. Oh yeah, and duh, the Jabberwockies battled Soul Sector. Um, so that was a, a huge like way of, of seeing what those dancers or dances look like. And internationally, I didn't know that made any kind of an impact until they started asking me to go out there because they also want a body rock out there. Once I started traveling and seeing that other people were inspired by the dancers that I know that live in my city, yeah, it made a huge impact on me on how I, I view body rock. There's people that have flown here that have told me that they flew all the way from Singapore because it was their dream just to go to the show. For me, that was a huge, huge like eye-opener because there's been times that I figured, you know what, this is a waste of time. I'm not making money from this. I'm just gonna quit. But thank God, you know, everything works out and everything happens for a reason. And I'm just blessed to keep continuing. This is our 15th, 16th year. So I would never have thought I would have continued, continued all the way up to 2015. It's crazy, like we came together. When I say we, I mean the leaders of Pac Modern, Team Millennia, Kaba Modern, uh, Super Galactic, Myron who does events, AJ Sison, Vibe, even Boogie Zone. We formed HHDA a long time ago and we talked about the judging system and we came up with this form and this was like way back in 2006. The form has influenced how I look at competitions, definitely. I, I can never watch something without thinking about, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, basically there is routine, there's execution, there's performance. And um, of those three things, there's little criteria that they have to meet. Um, basically, their lines, their arm angles, their body mechanics, um, how clean, precise the whole group looks, does the theme make sense, the flow, the transitions, spacing, blocking, energy, uh, performance, eye contact, do they project, all of these things that I'm juggling as I'm watching a performance. And honestly, I've been doing it for so long, I can do it Maybe the first or two routines, I'm already writing notes in my head. It's hard for me to watch something all the way through. If I watch something all the way through, it means that crew was dope because I didn't have anything critical going on in my head. In the beginning, I'll, my basic thing is their body mechanics and the way that they move. And if I notice that something looks off or they're, they're doing some kind of style and I can tell that they haven't trained in it that long, then I'll stop watching and I'll just take notes. Also, creativity is a big one for me because I've seen so many teams that are, have been innovators. I really am like just happy when I find like a, a team that does something that is so fresh, like cool, like a concept, or even just the way that they, they interpret the music, the way they present the dance, the way they use the stage. Like Gen 2, for example, Sean. When I saw how amazing his transitions from one piece to the next, they're seamless, the, the flow that there was pictures going on in each section of the space of the, the stage, like dude, I knew, I was like, Did, that dude's genius, you know? Like, I, I love that, I look for that. And I, I can tell when something's new, you know? And it's a treat for me when I see that. My overall take, I haven't talked to Mr. Wiggles himself. I did see him in Singapore, but I was too shy to say hi to him. <laughs> but I feel sad. I just feel like, I watch that and I go, oh, dang, you know? They don't know that guy and he started all the popping moves, the cool ones that that I like, know of, you know? And I feel bad. I, I don't know that there's a solution yet, but I know that eventually we would want to do something where there would be a way to expose 
the older with the newer. And I thought like, like events like World of Dance, we're trying to make an effort to do that. So, but yeah, it's just unfortunate. I mean, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what would be a solution. Because I think with, what happens with YouTube is once you get a perception of what something is, then it's easier for you to make a judgment of what that person's like or what that, yeah. that area is like or what the, whatever. When you just meet someone at a session or at a dance or at a competition, it's different. Yeah. You know, then you become friends and you get to know them and whatever things or judgments you had, you get to rearrange and you go, oh, it's not really like that. Yeah. Yeah, like my choreographer, my freestyle, I have uh, Mikey Disco, right? He's popular out in the Bay. Such a hater. <laughs> you know, complete hater on, he was on choreo. But he likes me. We're good friends, you know? And it took, I don't know, just a couple years and him really watching Bust a Groove uh, for him to change his mind and be like, oh, I kind of respect what you do. Okay, cool. Same with uh, my friend who does graph. His name is Saki. He's a straight up b-boy. When he started to spend time with us and seeing the, the practice and seeing how, how much we care about the music, you get to know that person. And you go, oh, whatever I was thinking, oh my bad, you know? I think that's what's different about back then and making a connection at events or at sessions or always like face to face versus the perception. And YouTube has its good points too because now you can get flown out and people can literally live off what they do now. All of those guys that get flown out and get paid to teach all over. Back then, I only knew two ways. You had to either have had a degree in dance to teach at a university or be an industry dancer, which is why I tried the, the agency route. And I'm okay that I, my life didn't work out that way. Like I'm still in school and my life took a different route. I do acknowledge that yeah, YouTube, that was my point. YouTube, both bad and good. <laughs> yeah, uh, I would tell myself that don't compare yourself and continue to do what you love. It's not gonna look like what I thought it would look like. If you continue to do it, you'll be so blessed. Like, beyond words, like I, I have a friend in every country. <laughs> you know, like the relationships that I have, I realize um, are all because of dancing. I'm not really cool. I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> so um, I'm just really blessed to uh, have had dance to find a commonality, um, uh, inspiration, you know, uh, with other people, and that I'm accepted for who I am, you know, because of dancing. This is Anna Sorrell. Thank you. Posted. Signing off. Uh, my last two cents would be: don't be afraid to find what you love. Continue to do it. You'll never know where it'll take you.